I'm CT. When I'm not hosting podcasts, I'm in the real world. I mean, everybody has to work, right? My job is CS, customer service. Solutions, relationships, and generating motivation to keep my team pumped up and connected to every guest who has chosen to stop in and pick up a few things or grab a gigantic basket and fill that monkey up. This is CTCS. Episode number five. Oh my God, what is that on the floor? Fresh off a three-day... RV weekend, and then what I mean by a weekend is, is just any any three days that I can take and put together, even if it's in the middle of the week. You walk into the store and people look at you, and I, I, I kind of look back, and you sit there and you go, uh-oh, something happened before I got here, and I guess there was thunder, like you wouldn't believe, you know, a big challenge and everything like that, and they go, well, good, I'm glad you're here, because now we're handing it off to you, so, well, welcome to the CS department, here we go, let's go have some fun change of plans headed to the meat department short on on hands back there so we're going into to a different department but that's what's part of about uh, being cs is that you've got to be able to be bendable shapeable and you've got to be able to go anywhere so i'm going to spend the next uh, hour hour and a half maybe uh, back here uh, in the in the meat department freezing my tail off you know how cold it is back here but looking forward to it i've been quoted to say for the past year because i'm celebrating my one year anniversary with a grocery store chain been quoted to say several times that it took 42 years of radio broadcasting to even be prepared for what what happens here in CS and to be that employee that can go into pretty much any department. And multitasking has always been my thing because I always believe you got to be a part of all four corners of a building for you, for you to have a successful team. I want to be not on the bench. I want to be out there playing. I want to make sure that this team does not suffer. And, and being here in the meat department, man, putting the shrimp together, baby, putting it all together, selling the steaks, you know, and smiling and creating, you know, fantasies for those that want to buy into meat, meat, lots of meat. Before the COVID lockdown, March 12th, 2020, pretty much we were like everybody else. Where's dinner at tonight? Well, what restaurant do you want to go to? It wasn't cooking dinner at home and doing, you know, that family thing until COVID happened. Well, I mean, once we were locked down, the first thing that I thought to myself is, I, I got to learn how to cook because we're not going out there to, to get dinners because the restaurants are closed. And man, have I ever fallen in love with the kitchen. So tonight being inside the meat department at the store, I'm telling you, I, it's just listening to everybody talk about their recipes, sharing their ideas, and, and it just inspires me to want to just go home right now and cook a damn steak. Another thing that doing the pandemic, being in lockdown, taught me was how to hand wash dishes and not rely on the dishwasher. Being in the meat department, man, there's no dishwashers back there. It's all about, you know, uh, your own might, your own guts, your own way of cleaning things and making sure that we remain a 100 percent uh, meat department. And that feels good when you look up there and it says 100 percent. I will go the extra mile to super serve our guests. Seriously, I mean, uh, to wherever the product is, I take them directly to it. Uh, you know, have conversations, listen to their stories and everything. But the one thing that I can't do that because it's the end of the month that, or even the beginning of the month um, is that your EBT card has got to be here. Your EBT card has got to physically be present and it can't be a picture. It can't be something that you've written down. And, and people go, well, come on, man, I, I do it all the time here. No, no, you don't. No, you don't. I, I will do anything and everything to help you 100% through your day. But I, I can't put the law on the line so that you can use an EBT card that is completely 100% visible. That's a tough cookie to swallow because, man, you know people are hungry right now. You know they are. And it's like, all I got to have is just that EBT card. Had to uh, break away from CS for a moment. Word just got to me. I mean, I'm getting phone calls. I'm getting emails and Facebook messages and things. I've lost a very good friend tonight. Oh, get it together. Get it together. Um, the guy that opened up the door for me to have uh, very interesting and very famous people on my podcast is the guy. I mean, he's. I got word tonight that he's gone. I always gave him credit for being the one that influenced me, inspired me to, to look at terrestrial radio and say, no, the buck doesn't stop here. It's growing forward. I love you, Mike. You're never gone. You're never gone. I don't know if this is a sign of the times, but man, we've been selling a lot of bus tickets. I mean, a ton of bus tickets to the point where we're telling people, no, we, we don't have that particular package you're looking for. If it is a sign of the times, what, what does it mean? Is it that people are just parking their cars and they're saying, screw it, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the bus. I'm not paying for gasoline because gas prices really are going through the roof, especially since uh, Hurricane Ida and stuff like that. So what, what does it mean? There are some stories I'm not supposed to hear. The woman who was looking for tapioca. 
And uh, so I took her over to the tapioca, and she says, oh, no, 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 that, that, that has milk. It makes me fart all the time. I, I, I no, 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 I, I need to have my own tapioca. Well, I've had my fair share of broken pickle jars, wine bottles, and things of this nature, uh, loaves of bread that have been opened, <sighs> kids that have uh, tinkled on the, on the floor, a dog that actually went to the bathroom on the floor here at the store. But I never, ever thought I would ever come across human feces in, in the store on the way to the bathroom. Uh, obviously, they couldn't hold it. And I, I have no judgment because I'm sure somewhere in my life I'm going to have the same situation where it's going to be, I, I got to go. And the nearest bathroom you can get to is at a grocery store. But, oh, my God. Oh, my God. All you can do is just breathe through your mouth. That's, you know, that's, that's all you can do. And, and clean it up as quickly as possible. So, because image is everything. You, you, you've got to get the store back to being clean again. 11 o'clock, baby. The doors are closed, and I'm outside looking for all the carts to bring them all in. To look good in the morning for that 6 a.m. team. Wow. So you can never predict a day at a grocery store. You can try to only do one thing. No matter how ugly it gets or how funny it may seem, just, just enjoy the ride. Just enjoy the ride. Because it is not going to be like any other day that you've had before. And if it is, man, do something. Go put some things back on the shelf. Go block. You know, go go meet somebody new inside the store that you see them all the time, but you don't know their first name. But, oh, God. What a strange, what a twist. Hey, Mike, I'm going to miss you, buddy. You're not gone. You're always going to be with me. Thank you so much for all the things that you did with the podcast. It's nothing but growing forward, buddy.